Hey Tech Lead here, welcome back to another exciting episode with your host, ex-Google, ex-Facebook Tech Lead. Today, we're going to be talking about money. How much do software engineers really get paid? And I think that there is a lot of misconfusion going around here. The public perception seems to be that software engineers get paid some six-figure salary, even 100K. Whereas in reality, it's actually far higher than that. A lot of you guys were surprised when I said that junior entry-level engineers get paid 200K at fan companies. And they do, they really do. By mid-career, after three or four years, software engineers are doing 300K or so in salary. By senior, they're doing about 400K. My last job over at Facebook was paying 500K. And then if you include the sign-on bonus, it was like a 600K income for just one year of work. Software engineers get paid a lot. And I want to explain for you how you too can achieve these levels of income because there are some tricks involved. First of all, you need to realize that there are two factors at play here. Number one is which company you work for and number two is where you do it. The cream of the crop companies where you will be able to get salaries like this is Silicon Valley top tier tech companies. We're talking about Facebook, Google, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, maybe Microsoft in Silicon Valley because geography really matters. I've personally checked the internal compensation tables before and salaries just totally depend on location. The fact is most of the world doesn't view software engineering as a white collar job. It's more like a blue collar, low class type of labor. I have a brother, he was working a 120K programming job in Silicon Valley, moved to Japan because he wanted to be there and then he had to put up with like a 60K job over there. And I've heard stories like this over and over again. So that's the first thing, geography. If you're a software engineer, I recommend checking out Silicon Valley, maybe just fake your address on your resume and see if you can apply and what type of offers you may be getting. And if you actually get something interesting, take a flight over and do the interview and just move over because Silicon Valley just pays better the entire culture, the respect around the profession of software engineering is just at a higher level. Now, the other factor is which company you're working at. And you really have to take a look at these top tier tech companies. It's like most companies are paying some amount, pretty average, above average. And then you look at Facebook, Google, and it's like much higher than that. And there's a number of reasons for this. One is these top tier tech companies, they can just afford to pay more because they're making so much money and they have their pick. Of course, you have to be extremely qualified. I think a lot of the numbers you generally hear about software engineers making 75K, 85K, maybe 100K, those are usually quoted from say base salary amounts from people working in startups where the equity is worthless or from smaller software engineering firms around the country, which is pretty common. Now, Silicon Valley may be the most concentrated area for high paying tech jobs, but there's also other areas like Seattle, LA, New York, and then some areas like I hear Switzerland pays pretty well as well. Now, if you're living anywhere else, I might recommend looking into these global top tier tech companies because they still would generally pay higher because they have that culture of respect for software engineers. So I'll quickly run over the salary breakdown for you. Software engineers, they're generally categorized into levels from level two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Level two is like interns, they may get paid 85K or so, and they only work three months or so. You really start in that level three, which is entry level software engineers. A standard package may look like 110K base salary, plus 15% performance bonus, plus another 150K stock over four years, and then maybe another 50K in sign on bonus, which brings out the total compensation in the first year to about 200K. And that's not even odd because you also get equity refreshers. The way refreshers work is when you sign on to a company, you usually get stock over four years. But after four years, all of that stock just dissolves. There's nothing left. And then you just quit the company. So in order to retain people, companies will usually continue to offer you about one fourth of your stock every year. So after the first year, you usually get another one fourth of your stock and so on. And your income just builds such that by the time you get to your second or third year, you're actually pulling in like 250K even. By that time, you may also just get promoted to level four, which is considered a solid individual contributor. Somebody who doesn't need any handholding and who can just take on tasks start to finish completely on their own. This is mid-level, probably the broadest range, maybe 70% or so of software engineers are in here. A standard package may look like 150K base salary, 320K stock over four years, 15% bonus, and then another 50K signing bonus or so, which rounds out the package to about 300K income. With the equity refreshers after a few years, you could be getting to 350K. And you may notice that this is a huge jump from level three to level four. It's like a 100K difference. And that's why a lot of software engineers are self-motivated to get promoted. It's why they push themselves to work hard. And I think it's overall a great system where you really give people like a carrot that's worth chasing after instead of just saying, well, yeah, if you work really hard, you get like a 5% raise, 15% raise. Like this is actually something sizable that people would really go after. 
From there, you get to senior level, which is L5 at Google or E5 at Facebook. And this is sometimes considered the terminal level. You really don't need to push yourself much further than that. And many people just stay at the senior level for many years. It's a sweet spot. You have a decent amount of responsibility. You lead small teams. You generally have learned to multiply your impact beyond yourself. A standard compensation package is 180K base, 20% bonus target, 500K in stock, throwing some equity refreshers, put in a signing bonus, and you're looking at 400 to 450K in total comp. And then if you wanted to push it some more, you can get to level six, which is where I was at, staff software engineer, and you really need an excellent opportunity for this. Sometimes opportunities just don't exist. You just can't make enough impact. Generally though, you need to be leading teams of people on complete projects that are impactful, that are delivering results that impact the company's bottom line. You're responsible for coordinating the success of a project, cross-team collaboration, and coding, while it is still important, begins to take a bit of a backseat. People may do it, say, 20 to 30% of their time only, or even less. I know some level six engineers, they barely even code anymore. Most of the time, they're just writing design docs. They're still responsible for understanding the technical design and architecture and implementation of a project. They're not necessarily a people manager, but they do a lot more delegation. A typical salary here is 220K base salary, 20% bonus, a million in stock over four years, 75K sign on, throwing some equity refreshers. You're looking at 500K to 600K total comp. When you get to level seven or eight, these are usually distinguished software engineers, well respected in their industries, well known. I've met a few of them myself and they're generally impressive all around, great technical skills and communication skills. So I hope that rundown gave you an idea of what it takes to succeed in software engineering. It's not just all about coding. In fact, coding ability pretty much peaks at about level four. And then after that, it's really about multiplying your impact, leading people, mentoring, cross-team collaboration, taking on initiative, leading projects to success. And this doesn't even include all the other perks and benefits you might get like 401k matching, health insurance, medical, dental, vision, computer equipment, free food, parties and offsites, and best of all, free coffee. Okay. So let's take a step back. I remember when I used to be running my own apps and websites, I would think that software engineers are making about 100K. And if I could only beat 100K, then I would be good and I'd be happy. And that served me well for a few years until I realized later on when I got into Google that most engineers there are making 200K, if not way more than that. And now I realize, and my overall recommendation is that most software engineers try to land a job at one of these top tier tech companies. It's like a marathon and it's something that you might try year after year honing your interview skills. So overall, the biggest mistake I see a lot of software engineers doing is that they somehow convince themselves that they don't need to work in Silicon Valley at the top tier tech company. They'll say things like, oh, the cost of living is too high there. Or yeah, I don't wanna work at a corrupt company like Facebook. These are just giant monopolies. I'm good with my current job. I like my coworkers and that's all good, that's great. And quite frankly, I used to be like this as well. I would be jaded and bitter at those Googlers writing their Googler buzzes. And I still kind of am. But overall, I would still recommend that you give it a shot because it's going to change your life. It's going to open so many doors and you can still quit after say a year or two and just be on your merry way with that brand name equity on your resume. The last thing I wanna know is I think a lot of us are focusing too much on salary and what we're really choosing is a lifestyle because no matter how much you're getting paid, if you're working in a company, no matter if you're junior, mid-level, senior, staff, or the CEO, you're all living a very similar lifestyle. You live in the same city, you're eating the same food, going to the same bathrooms, drinking the same coffee, going to the same company events, living in the same city, working in the same office under the same working conditions for the same eight to 12 hours a day that you may be there. And the higher paid people are actually working even harder. And maybe they just have a nicer car or a nicer house or family vacations. And that's pretty much about it. At this salary range, everybody can afford nice things. Anybody can go buy a Porsche. Everyone can go out to nice restaurants. Everyone can take nice vacations. Taxes eat up half their salaries and everybody is still chained to their jobs for health insurance because health insurance is so ridiculously expensive in our country that if you decide to quit, you'll just be paying through the nose for some pretty poor weak coverage. Retirement is just pretty difficult in this country. And the funny thing is any additional income you make it may not even be for yourself, right? It may just go into your house, which you pass on to your kids and then to your kids' kids who would just squander it over in Vegas. So that's the funny thing. A lot of us are busy working away our lives in our nine to five jobs to save up to buy a bigger house, which is just going to be passed on to somebody who we don't even know. 
And my piece of advice here is to just remember to enjoy that journey. Pick a lifestyle that you enjoy. Don't work yourself to death over a job. It's not all about the money. Because that game of chasing money, it's always going to be there. There's no end. Even today, I continue to chase it. So that'll do for me. Overall, I just hope I inspired you to continue applying to these top tier tech companies. I think it's going to be a worthwhile move, especially for software engineers, to think a little bit about your lifestyle and to enjoy your journey. If you liked the video, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.